Hi everyone, my brothers and sisters. I am Ruel Morales and I welcome you to Easter Mornings, the Easter special of Pathways of Hope. Our Gospel reading for today is coming from the 20th chapter of John 11 to 18. And here, one character in, the, in that uh, Gospel was highlighted, Mary Magdalene. Alam niyo, una nating mababasa si Maria ng Magdala sa Ikawalong Lukas, kung saan sinasabi na kasama si Maria ni Jesus at iba pang mga babae na kung saan sila ay pinagaling sa mga espiritong masasama sa mga, kasak, sa mga sakit. Mary was described as a woman from whom seven demons had gone out. Marami ang nagsabing prostitute siya, pero hindi naman ito explicitly na nasabi o nabanggit sa ating passage. Nevertheless, having, having seven demons in you meant that she was not living a godly life. Tunay na isa siyang makasalanang babae. However, tinanggap ni, Ma ni Maria ang kapatawaran ng Panginoon and she was released by Jesus from the bondage of Satan. At siguro o oh, marahil simula noon, Mary accompanied Jesus and became one of His faithful followers. Siguro rin isa siya doon sa mga nakasaksi ng paghihirap at pagkamatay ng Panginoon sa krus, kahit na sa malayo. Kaya naman, sa ating Gospel reading for today, In the morning following Jesus' burial, Mary was one of the first to visit the grave of Jesus to attend to his dead body. One cannot imagine how Mary felt at that moment. Nasaksihan niya kung papaanong pinahirapan si Kristo ang kanyang mahal na Panginoon and how Jesus eventually died a brutal death. She was not even able to pay her last respect as he was immediately buried on that Good Friday. Confused, fearful, distressed, and inconsolable. Sobrang lungkot at dalamhati ang nasa puso ni Maria ng Magdala noong araw na yon. It was in this state of her mind and emotion when she saw the stone covering the tomb removed. May pumasok sa libingan ni Jesus dahil bukas ang kanyang libingan. Kaya naman ang una niyang ginawa, tumakbo siyang pabalik sa kanyang mga kasama, sa mga iba pang disipulo at Sinabayan siyang bumalik sa nicho ng Panginoon at doon nga nakita nilang walang laman. Wala doon ang katawan ni Kristo. This probably devastated her even more. At nung umalis na ang mga disipulo, ang mga apostoles, na iwan si Maria all by herself, grieving and in pain. At nandito siya sa ganitong klase ng kalungkutan nang lumabas at nagsalit, nagtanong sa kanya ang dalawang anghel. Hindi iyon pinansin masyado ni Maria. Eventually, Jesus himself came to the sin and while Mary was weeping, he came and said, Why are you weeping? He started a conversation with Mary, but probably because she was beside herself in agony, Mary uh, uh, pleaded for him instead to give back the, the body of Jesus. Marahil akala niya isa to doon sa mga sundalo o sa mga gardener doon sa, sa tomb. At sabi niya, kung nakita niyo ang aking Panginoon, ibalik niyo na lang siya sa amin. However, when Jesus called her name, sabi ni Jesus, Mary, Mary Magdalene recognized that it was not the gardener nor the, nor the soldier. It was Jesus. She probably recognized his voice and the way Jesus called her, a very familiar tone. Si Jesus nga, yun ang kanyang nasabi. Sa totoo lang, mga kapatid palagi tayong tinatawag ng Panginoon, hindi ba? Lalong-lalo na sa mga pagkakataong tayo ay nahihirapan, may sakit, nagdadalamhati o nalulungkot. He calls us because He wants us to be accompanied by Him 
through our trials and pains. Gusto niya tayong samahan. But many times, sa sobrang pagtingin natin sa ating sarili at sa ating sakit, because of our concern for what we feel at ourselves and our, our uh, burdens, that we cannot hear or recognize God's voice. Mga kapatid, Easter begins in the sunrise. And symbolically, that sunrise tells us that it is a new day, a new morning, new hope, new strength, new power that comes from Jesus. Hindi siguro masosolve ang lahat ng problema natin ngayon. Hindi siguro mawawala ang ating mga sakit. But as we become more and more intimate with Him, and as we continue to listen him and to Him and recognize His voice, we will see things from the perspective of Jesus, and we will learn to surrender to His will even more. When Mary recognized that it was Jesus, immediately her fear and grief turned into joy. Though she did not understand, hindi pa niya nun naiintindihan, ba, nabuhay ang Diyos. Pero ang alam lang niya, nandyan si Kristo at nakita niya at narinig niya. Immediately she knew that everything will be okay, everything will be good, everything will, will be solved because Jesus is alive. My brothers and sisters, as we continue to face the challenges of life and feel our helplessness, our hopelessness, our illness and pain. We look at the risen Lord and we know that things will go right because He has risen from the dead and He has conquered death for us. Problems and fears remain. Nandyan pa rin. Hindi pa rin agad-agad mawawala. But Jesus' presence makes all this light and clear and has given us and will give us the confidence and hope because we will remain in Him. Pangalawang punto na gusto kong ibahagi ngayon. Pagnilayan natin ang pagmamahal ni Maria Magdalena kay Jesus. Probably because of His teachings and the way He, uh, that he loved the disciples including Mary and all His followers through their journey together. But one thing that most probably endeared Jesus to Mary was the forgiveness she experienced when Jesus released her from the seven demons in her life. Mary must have suffered. Naghirap siguro siya, nagdusa siya dahil sa kanyang pagiging uh, alipin ng, ng kasalanan. But when Jesus delivered her and called her to Himself, she experienced freedom, complete freedom, kalayaan, at ang kaligayahan that goes with being one with God. Mga kapatid, Easter, ang Pasko ng pagabuhay, ay Pasko ng victory because Jesus has freed us from our own sinfulness and conquered death for us so we can have the hope of eternal life. We thank the Lord because as St. Paul said, he, was, he became obedient unto death, even death on the cross. Namatay siya sa krus para sa atin so that He can show us and prove to us and lavish us with the unconditional and unmerited love. At ang pagmamahal ng Panginoon sa atin ay nararapat lamang nating suklian ng ganun din katinding pagmamahal para sa Kanya. Kung ang utos niya ay mahalin natin siya ng lubos, iyon ay dahil una niya tayong minahal. Opo, di ba? Siya muna ang nagmahal pagkatapos tinawag niya tayong mahalin niyo ako ng lubos. Pagkatapos nun, nang lumapit tayo sa kanya, pinatawad niya tayo at binigyan niya tayo ng, buho, ng panibagong pag-asa. Hindi naghahanap ng kapalit ang Panginoon sa kanyang pagmamahal bagkos nais niyang lumapit tayong sa kanya upang maibigay niya sa atin ng lubos ang biyaya dala ng isang maganda at malapit na relasyon sa Panginoon. And finally, the first thing that Mary did when you know, she, she experienced Jesus' presence was to run to the disciples and declare, I have seen the Lord. No, sa sobrang saya niya, tumakbo siya. Sinabi niyang nakita ko ang Panginoon. 
It was far too important and significant the news that she had to proclaim to all that Jesus had risen. Siguro sa kanyang pagtakbo, sinisigaw niya, buhay ang Panginoon. Mga kapatid, in this time of great distress, in this time when pandemic is still with us, in this time when many of us are really getting fearful of, of, the, of the future, suffering and, plur- and lalong-lalo na ng paglaganap ng kasalanan sa, sa ating paligid, sa ating mundo. We need to always proclaim that Jesus has risen. Yan ang napakahalagang bagay na dapat nating gawin. Hindi lang tayo dapat magsaya dahil buhay ang Panginoon. Kundi sabihin natin sa mga taong nangangailangan ng liwanag, narito na at nabuhay na magmuli ang liwanag ng Panginoon. We do not need any other proof. We only have to show them our lives. We only need to show them and share with them our joy. As we proclaim with our words, those who are in darkness should see in the way we live and in the lives that indeed Jesus is risen and He is with us and dwelling in us. This is the light that shines through the present darkness. Itong liwanag na ito ng muling pagkabuhay ng Panginoon ang kailangan ng mga taong nasa kadiliman. Ang Pasko ng pagkabuhay ay ang rurok ng ating kaligtasan, the pinnacle of our salvation. It is the be all and end all of everything. Sabi nga ni Paul, kung hindi siya nabuhay na magmuli, walang kwenta ang ating buhay pananampalataya. But thanks be to God that indeed He was risen. The tomb was empty. Jesus had nothing more to prove because He has given it all. From becoming man, being obedient to the Father, and bearing the suffering and pains, and eventually dying a painful death, the most humiliating death that any man could experience. Ang kailangan lang natin mga kapatid ay tanggapin natin siya bilang ating Panginoon at ating tagapagligtas. We need to radically live our lives as disciples and bring the good news to everyone, the good news of salvation. In Easter, we receive that grace. In Easter, we are victorious until the end. Mga kapatid, isang maligayang Pasko ng pagkabuhay sa ating lahat at pagpalainawa tayo ng ating buhay na Panginoon. Thanks be to God.